Trapped on a deserted island, the president of a major company finds a wrecked cruise ship, which he turns into a life-saving survival opportunity for his crew. Today we will recap the story of the 2018 movie The Island. The world is shaken by news of a meteorite that has gone off course and is flying toward Earth at breakneck speed. Meanwhile, Ma and his younger brother Xiao are going on a trip together with the company workforce, as part of a team-building event. On the trip, Ma takes a lottery ticket with him, hoping to finally get rich and win the heart of the beautiful colleague Shen. The team gathers by the brightly colored sea transport that will take them to the team building site. The team sets off as soon as the president of the company, Zheng, arrives, neglecting to count the employees. Both Ma and Xiao, who are late, have to run after the transport until the president lets them inside. The sea coach launches and the driver, nicknamed Dick, enthusiastically begins to introduce himself to the passengers. He is interrupted by the assistant to the president of the company and gives the floor to Zheng. The boss informs the staff that because of the increase in stock, each employee's salary will increase by 10%. The euphoria of this news is interrupted by Ma's enthusiastic exclamation. The man discovers that he has just won 60 million yuan in the lottery. He begins to run around the salon and sing songs and everyone in attendance decides that the man is so happy about his pay raise. Everyone's glee turns to panic when they notice a huge wave coming toward their sea transport. The driver, Dick, tells the terrified passengers to put on their life jackets and prepares to go through the wave. Complicating matters, that tsunami is accompanied by a burning cargo ship. Thanks to the titanic efforts of the driver, the coach manages to avoid colliding with the ship and goes underwater. Moments later, the passengers watch in horror as a giant whale swims past them. Along with it, the coach passes through a wave and the ocean current carries the crew off in an unknown direction. In the late afternoon, the boat hits a rocky shore. The shocked passengers try to recover from the terrible crash. Women's wailing and cries for help are heard all around. Ma regains consciousness and is relieved to find that he has managed to keep the winning lottery ticket. He makes his way inside the jungle, trying to find his beloved Shen among the passengers. He hears the girl screaming in the distance and discovers that her leg has been pinned by a rock. He helps his sweetheart escape and they find shelter in a crevasse, where they spend the night together with the other surviving passengers. The second day after the crash arrives, the driver finds the passengers huddled together in the cave and tells them that he spent the previous day exploring the island and found some provisions. However, the disgruntled employees demand that Dick contact his company and evacuate them as soon as possible. Unfortunately, communication on the island does not work and the passengers are completely cut off from civilization. Professor Shi, one of the team building participants, assumes that the worst predictions of scientists have come true and the meteorite has fallen to Earth, destroying all life in the area. The passengers are horrified at the idea that the world is coming to an end. Ma disagrees with the professor, because he is so close to living a wealthy life and cannot lose everything. He urges people to get busy and find a way to send out a distress signal. However, it starts raining on the island and the passengers are forced to hide in the ravine again, sobbing and shivering from the cold. The next day, the driver takes some of the staff into the jungle and shows them where to get food. But the office workers are not used to climbing trees, so they watch mesmerized as Dick does the work for them. Gradually, the people adapt to life on the island. Using brightly colored life jackets, they compose a message on the rocks near the shore and assemble a satellite from the tools at hand. Unfortunately, their attempts to contact civilization go nowhere. Suddenly, the islanders are startled by a loud explosion. It turns out that Xiao tried to repair the sea transport on the orders of President Zheng, which caused another breakdown. Due to the hopelessness of the situation, the company president becomes enraged. For the first time, his wealth and power play no role. Dick brings the passengers food and water, and they immediately rush at the provisions like animals. Some express dissatisfaction with the taste of the fruit, which enrages the driver. He reminds those present that their status here means nothing. If they are hungry and want other food, they must get it themselves. Part of the team supports Dick and follows him into the cave he discovered in the jungle. Finally, the survivors manage to find a safe place and build a fire. Ma makes a timid attempt to speak to Shen and promises to get the girl off the island, but she ignores him. Meanwhile, the group decides to appoint Dick the driver as their new leader, since he is best suited to survive on the island. The guy agrees to take on this responsibility, but offers to set certain rules. The news about the new leader doesn't please the company's management, which has decided to join the group as well. Shen leaves the cave to vent her emotions. Ma follows her like a faithful dog. The girl is about to yell into the emptiness, but her colleague interrupts her with his shout. Seeing the intrusive suitor, Shen decides to return to the cave and yells at Ma when he tries to talk to her. At dawn, Dick gathers the men for a general meeting and divides them into teams. Each team must perform certain tasks to help them survive on the island. Getting food, fetching water, and cooking. Dick's rules produce results and he soon becomes obsessed with his new power. Ma doesn't want to be under his authority, so for several days he explores the island on his own, 
Back in the cave, the man tells his colleagues what he has learned during these days. Dick becomes furious and hits Shen with a stick, for trying to share food with Ma. The man tries to discipline his sweetheart's abuser, but Dick easily slaps him and presses his face against the boiling water. Later, he ties Ma to a tree and warns the others that this will happen to anyone who disobeys his rules. At night, Xiao helps his older brother free himself from his bonds. The next day Ma decides to try to sail off the island and offers his younger brother to join him. Shen finds Ma on shore and tries to dissuade him from escaping. The man shows her the winning lottery ticket and says he is willing to risk his life for it. Finally, he decides to confess his feelings to his colleague. All these years, he has been the invisible prince who has secretly arranged the brightest events in her life for Shen and helped her cope with the aftermath of her difficult divorce. Unfortunately, the girl does not feel the same way about her colleague. Deciding that he has nothing more to lose, Ma tries to kiss his beloved, but gets a harsh rejection. The frustrated man leaves Shen on the shore, but promises to return for her if he survives. The brothers set out on a small makeshift raft. Along the way, Ma recalls the poor and cruel childhood he had with his brother. Suddenly the man's gaze is drawn to the lifeless body of a polar bear floundering in the water. The brothers think all the poles are flooded with water, so they take the bear carcass with them and return back to the island. Dick punishes the fugitives by making them row on dry land. The humiliation of the brothers is observed with pleasure by all the staff. Shen tells everyone about Ma's lottery ticket, which leads to more ridicule from his colleagues. Xiao tries to question his older brother about the lottery, as they had agreed to split the winnings in half. However, Ma irritably pushes his brother away and hints that he's not going to share the money. Soon everyone comes to the realization that they are stuck on the island forever. President Zheng looks sadly at the photo of his beloved daughter and throws away his useless money. The 21st day on the island arrives, Dick's dictatorship becomes more and more pronounced. He forbids his subordinates to talk to each other and to take breaks during work. As punishment for insubordination, he orders Ma and President Zheng to catch fish for everyone. On the fishing trip, a friendly conversation develops between the men, where the former company leader admits that he understands Ma's feelings. He suggests that they join forces to get off the island. In the evening, during another scuffle between the islanders, President Zheng decides to address his former subordinates. He suggests that they do not become like animals and stop climbing trees to get food. If they are to be the last inhabitants on Earth, the existence of the entire planet will depend on their progress. The team supports the leader's speech with applause, but Dick interrupts him. He is convinced that people need rules, not logic, to survive. He tells everyone who disagrees with his opinion to leave the cave. The team splits into two camps, Ma, Xiao, and a few other staff members follow the president. Shen and the rest of the team remain under Dick's leadership. Zheng's group makes their way through the jungle until the president leads them to an overturned ship. Exploring the ship, they find everything they need to live comfortably on the island and even fuel. In the end, President Zheng manages to regain the trust of his crew. The next morning, Ma and Xiao are excited to see the huge cruise ship that will be their new salvation. While fishing, the brothers reconcile and fantasize about how they will share the money when they get rich. Meanwhile, the second camp begins to have trouble finding provisions. Ma cannot allow his beloved to go hungry, so he secretly puts fish in her basket. The proud girl at first refuses to accept her colleague's gifts, but gives up when she learns that he can get her soap. Ma then brings his beloved to the ship and carefully helps her wash her hair. Later, he gives her a tour of the cruise ship, showing her all the amenities and supplies they've managed to get their hands on. After a beautiful day together, Shen decides to open up to her colleague and confesses that she broke up with her husband because she couldn't trust him. An intimate moment ensues between the couple, which is interrupted by President Zheng. Confused, the girl decides to return to her camp. Shen tells her group about the cruise ship and soon they too arrive at the ship. President Zheng voices to the staff a plan for how they can band together for survival. He suggests using a deck of cards as money. For completing tasks, the subordinates will receive playing cards of different denominations with which to pay for food or other conveniences. The offer interests Dick's group, but the driver refuses to obey Zheng's rules and takes his men away. A confused Ma reminds the president of his plan to leave the island. It turns out that Zheng never intended to escape and was using the gullible brothers to do his bidding. However, the brothers no longer want to be someone else's slaves and leave Zheng's group for the jungle. Day 60 on the island. The brothers set up a new shelter in a helicopter, which had also once crashed. Ma has only 29 days to present his lottery ticket and collect his winnings. Gradually, President Zheng's opponents begin to fall into despondency. Without special equipment, they are unable to secure their sustenance. The exhausted brothers lose hope of getting off the island and decide to return to the cruise ship. During their absence, Zheng has developed an entire trading business on the ship, turning playing cards into a currency of exchange. Some of Dick's men have joined his camp, happy to be under the command of a strong leader who can provide them with provisions and comfort. Meeting Zheng, Ma asks to borrow a fishing net from him. 
The boss scoffs at his request and orders one of his goons to beat the brothers and chase them back into the jungle. At night, a worried Shen arrives at the brothers' hideout. She shares with them the fish she traded from Jung for instant noodles. Ma is disappointed that the girl also obeys the boss's rules and refuses to accept her help. When the offended Shen leaves, Ma throws away all the fish she brought. It is the 90th day on the desert island. Exhausted from hunger, Ma looks sadly at the lottery ticket, which will no longer bring him money. Suddenly a fish falls from the sky, and then another, and another. Soon there is a downpour of fish that have been thrown onto the island with the storm. Taking another look at his lottery ticket, the man realizes that he has his coveted winnings. Having satisfied their hunger, the brothers dry some of the fish in the trees. In Ma's mind arises a cunning plan to take over control of the island. First, they arrive at Dick's camp, offering to trade the fish for items that cannot be repaired on the island. They then come to Jung, making a similar offer to his group. Then, dividing the fish equally between the two groups, they pit their leaders against each other, who will want more provisions for themselves. Eventually, the brothers plan to find out Dick and Jung's weaknesses and secret desires in order to gain control over them. Ma decides to apologize to Shen and arrives at the small cave where she takes a shower. However, he realizes too late that another of his goofy colleagues is inside, who didn't mind hearing compliments about her. All the while, Shen, smiling lovingly, observed the man's monologue from the cliff. During another fish distribution, Xiao persuades Dick's group to ask Jung for a fishing net. Dick agrees to settle, but the president puts his own conditions on him. Either he agrees to work for him, or his group will have to return double the fish from their catch. Jung's dismissive attitude pisses Dick off and he punches the boss in the head. The former driver then orders his group to attack the enemy camp and take the fish from them by force. The brothers, who observe the faction's fight, smile contentedly, for their plan has begun to bear its first fruits. The day turns to evening, but the fighting between the two camps continues unabated. Suddenly the bright light of a spotlight shines on the gathering. Ma uses the ship's microphone to address the collective and urges them to unite in the search for a large landmass that must have survived the meteorite fall. Jung ridicules the man's proposal, but Shen stands up for her friend. The girl is not willing to spend the rest of her life on the island, competing with each other for survival. Using an example of restored machinery, Ma shows his colleagues that they stand a good chance of getting off the island if they all make an effort together. An appreciative audience welcomes the man's inspiring words and makes him their new leader. A truce ensues. The starving are given some hot food, and Jung allows them to set up at the crew's camp. Ma tells the crew to monitor weather and sea level changes, and keep a diary of their observations. Dick finally gets a long-awaited rest, entrusting command to the new leader. Ma shows his colleagues charged cell phones, and Xiao shows them pictures and messages from relatives in exchange for playing cards. The Happy Islanders help each other hunt and have fun together. By acting together, they manage to devise a plan to rescue their sea boat from the rocks. The talented Xiao manages to restore power throughout the cruise camp. The happy folks throw a party to celebrate, praising the brothers. Xiao revels in the power he has gained and throws playing cards into the crowd, watching with pleasure as people throw themselves at them. Ma and Shen plunge headlong into romance, spending all their free time together. Watching his girlfriend, the man begins to wonder if she will stay with him when they get off the island. During another party, the islanders hear strange sounds like gunshots. The brothers and the driver, Dick, decide to go to the mountains to find the source of the noise. On the way, Ma confesses to his brother that he has heard these sounds before and they are heard every 12 days. Once out on the cliff, they see a ship launching fireworks near the island. A delighted Dick rushes to the others to tell them that salvation is near. The brothers do not share his elation, for they must return to the life of losers. Xiao can't accept this and convinces his brother to hide the truth from the crew in order to maintain his power. Back on the cruise ship, they warn the crew that Dick has become delusional. When he returns to camp and starts raving about the fireworks ship, the crew doesn't take his words seriously and decides he's just lost his mind after losing his power. The poor guy is locked in a refrigerator and knocked out by an electric shock. Xiao makes a new rule and forbids the team to go into the mountains at night. Left alone, Shan and Ma discuss what happened with Dick. The girl confesses that she is afraid to go home because she feels happy to be on the island with her beloved. She wants to stay by Ma's side forever, and the man promises her that. A few more days pass. Watching the group begin to bully Dick, Ma's conscience begins to take over. Xiao reassures his brother and promises that they will soon return home, retaining their power. The boy asks Jung to trade him his quarters, but he refuses to accept playing cards and comply. It turns out that all this time the president was buying up fish in order to regain his influence over his subordinates. Xiao knew this, so he sought out the company president's weak spot. He shows his boss a recording of his little daughter, which was left on his phone. The guy threatens to delete the video if Jung doesn't turn over his company and property to him. The boss is sure there is nothing left of the rest of the world, so he easily agrees to the deal and signs over all of his property to Xiao. Later, the young man shares his devious plan with his brother. 
He intends to break the engine of the sea boat and steal the fisherman's net so that their crew will be left forever on the island with no chance of survival. According to his plan, only he and Ma will be able to return home and live the rich life they dreamed of. The man is horrified when he realizes that his younger brother has become obsessed and has begun to abuse his power. Later, Ma is stuffed into a sack and brought to the shore, where all his colleagues have gathered. Shen decides to perform a wedding with her lover, as she has learned to trust men again, thanks to him. Ma's wildest wishes have finally come true, but he does not feel happy. While everyone gathers to cheer and congratulate the couple, he begins to shout that it is all a hoax. The man tries hysterically to convince the group that the ship is real. He asks Dick for help, but the poor guy has already begun to believe in his own insanity. The people around him decide that Ma has also lost his mind and hit him with a makeshift stun gun. In the days that follow until the ship arrives, the man vainly tries to convince his colleagues of the veracity of his words, but not even Shen believes him thinking he was playing with her feelings. Xiao encourages his brother and reminds him of the riches that await them upon their return home. Overhearing their conversation, Dick accuses Ma of lying, but instead of a showdown, the man suggests that Dick join forces with him to escape from the island. On the evening of the ship's arrival, Ma suggests that his brother get the crew drunk to the point of unconsciousness in order to get away unnoticed. In the midst of the party, Dick sneaks onto the ship unnoticed and breaks the fuel pipe. He tries to light the gasoline, but the lighter doesn't work. Meanwhile, Ma picks up a torch and urges the crew to set fire to the vessel so that the people on the ship will see the fire and come to their aid. The people still don't believe the man and try to snatch the torch from him, putting out the fire during the confrontation. Ma and Dick throw the burning torch over each other until it ends up at Shen's feet. The man asks his beloved to trust him and set fire to the vessel. The girl throws the torch into the boat, but it fails to reach the ship and falls into the water. Amidst the commotion, the drunken President Jung emerges from his cabin with a lit cigarette. Ma electrocutes his boss and the cigarette falls out of his hand, setting the boat on fire. He then throws the book in which Jung bequeathed his entire estate to Xiao into the fire. The younger brother falls to the ground in hysteria, having lost his only chance at a future without poverty. The people are panicking, trying to extinguish the ship that has kept them alive for months. Eager to get revenge on Ma, they chase him through the mountains. The man reaches a cliff and, failing to calculate his speed, falls down. As he flies, he notices a rescue ship beginning to move toward their desert island. The man plunges into the water with a smile on his face, remembering the happy laughter of his colleagues. The next morning, he is thrown ashore. Coming to his senses, he goes looking for the others, but finds only Shen. She tells Ma that the entire crew has left, as the ship could not wait long. Shen, on the other hand, has decided to wait for her beloved to spend a few more happy days together on the island. Eventually the team of survivors gain worldwide popularity. President Jung buys the island to turn it into a resort. The entire team visits Xiao in the hospital, who has been diagnosed with temporary amnesia. Ma manages to collect his winnings after all. He gains the company building and the love of the girl he has been courting for years. After finding yourself with the protagonists on the island, whose team would you join and why? Write your opinion in the comments and like this video.